Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, I will be talking about the movie Headcount that I just recently watched. So, this is a 2019 Netflix original. Um, it follows a character named Evan who travels to the desert to stay with his brother Peyton while on spring break. While they are on a hike uh, or adventure of some sort, they encounter another group of people who um, consists of um, a bunch of different kind of like random teenagers and one of the girls happens to catch Evan's eye. They get to talking, the group ends up inviting him back to the house and upon um, arriving back at the house, they start to drink, hang out, tell scary stories around the fire and it becomes evident that Evan's scary story is much more than just a story. So this is directed by L. Callahan and it stars Isaac J. as Evan. This movie, first and foremost, I just want to say if you are, um, if you're into psychological horror and if you've seen It Follows, this movie reminds me of It Follows. I think It Follows is, I want to say 2015 or 2016 um, is when it came out. Basically, it's like a, it's a horror film, but at the same time, it is. It has a lot of thriller aspects. It's a psychological horror. It's one of those movies where the evil or, you know, whatever is supposed to be um, opposing danger to the characters in the movie isn't actually seen by everyone. It's pretty much just one person or one certain group of people can see this evil. And it's kind of like them trying to make everyone around them aware of it. Kind of like the sixth sense, um, sort of how, you know, he could see the dead people and uh, that's kind of how this movie is. So basically, like I said before, you know, the friends start out, they're sitting around a fire, they're telling scary stories. Evan being the newcomer of the group, he doesn't really have one, you know, in the stash. So they tell him, you know what, go to a website called anonymousnightmares.com. That's that's really what they tell him to do. He, he goes there, just picks a random one. And um, the title of the story is His G. Basically, um, this is a cursed story or poem. It's more of like a poem, riddle kind of thing. And it's just like the Candyman, um, not Candyman, uh, well, I guess, yeah. But like Bloody Mary, you know, you speak it into existence. You say Bloody Mary three times in the mirror. This is sort of that way. You know, it's like his G, um, you're not supposed to say it. And like you say it five times and then like it's cursed or it awakens something. So... When when he reads the story, obviously the title is repeated five times, so he ends up saying that, not knowing that he's awakening um, a curse or a demon or whatever. And I think one of the interesting things about this movie, which I like, but also I kind of feel like is a negative, is I don't want to say misleading, but this this definitely the first half of the movie maybe this is just me the first half of the movie makes you think and from the title head count that it's going to be a movie about these friends and basically them lasting or them going missing just random weird things happening to them so slowly one by one they get picked off and it's kind of like also by the way i mean i know i said uh earlier that he goes and visits his brother but this is in the desert i mean like middle of nowhere i'm guessing like you know arizona or new mexico somewhere you know nevada it's a desert and this house that they um that they're all staying in and that they hang out at is you know it's it's like off the grid like i said it's middle of nowhere you have to drive miles probably before you see um another house or another building and it's one of those like people are trapped in a certain location and evil from the outside is taking control of them they're trying to shut the evil out um basically that thing so as far as the story goes and the plot like i said at first it makes you think it's something that it's not which um can be good can be bad um, I'll get into spoilers, by the way, or more specifics towards the end. So I'm trying to keep this kind of vague, um, just like I did with the last review. So the first act, and 
in the trailer, um, you'll notice that they become confused because their friend will be right here and they'll be talking to him and then something will happen and they'll realize that that wasn't actually their friend. They get confused. Um, there's a scene at the beginning of the movie where they're about to leave and they're like, oh, you know, who are we waiting for? And um, one of the girls says that it's her boyfriend and Evan is like, no, no, no. He like, um, and he ends up being there. So they were like, uh, he ends up being at the car already. So they're like, oh, no, we have everyone. And Evan's like, wait, no, there's a girl. Like, there's a girl that's missing. Like, because he knows earlier in the day he met when he met them all, at you know, on the rock when they were on a hike. He knows that there was, I believe it was 10 people. And now there's only nine um, other than him. So he knows someone's missing. And they're like, no, like, they don't really know what he's talking about. So it's it's interesting but like i said it good and bad um it can be misleading but at the same time i think that's good you know you don't want a predictable ending so i think the storyline is at at the beginning maybe a little confusing because well, not at the beginning um once you get some more resolve it might become a little confusing because you're like wait but but what what was that about earlier in the movie um overall in the end though i think it was I, I don't think it was the most difficult thing to understand. Just the execution of it was a little, um, like, murky. Like, it wasn't crystal clear. But it's good to make your viewers think. You know, when um, anytime someone's making a movie, you want something that's clear enough for people to understand, but you don't want something that's so straightforward. People don't remember it. People don't think about it outside of the theater or once they once they, you know turn our tv off so like i said pros and cons as far as the storyline goes and without giving away too much <clears throat> excuse me without giving away too much basically it follows their journey now that they are cursed and um slowly bad things start to happen to their friends the girl zoe that evan is you know basically in love with she falls off of like a, a short cliff um while they're out on a hike one day and she says it's weird because she felt like she knows she didn't jump and she knows that it she didn't feel anyone push her but she said it feels like something took over her body and she just fell off of the cliff um she survived just messed up her ankle um the whole thing where they think someone is right here and then something happens they turn their head and they realize that person wasn't actually a real person it's like something is it's like so, like their mind is playing tricks on them. They're just like, I swore you were just right here. How are you here? So I thought that was weird when I was watching it. I'm like, I want to see how um, L. Callahan. Sorry, I forgot um, the director's name. for. I want to see how they, they tie this back into the story because of, you know, what I went into it understanding the movie to be. Um, and it's kind of kind of uh, different than what I expected. The cinematography in this movie, I'm a fan of it. I, I like the, you know, the camera work. I think overall Netflix, of course, you know, with Netflix being such a huge, successful platform, you know, streaming service, it, it seems like everyone in the world nowadays has a, has Netflix, you know, whether you use someone else's account, um, you know, and in 2019, it's about to be 2020, a lot less people have cable now. So most people watch their TV from streaming services Although cable is trying to do different things to make come back, totally off topic. But cinematography, like I said, of course, with Netflix being such a hugely successful big, you know, company, they're gonna have, you know, a ton of ton of money to back these movies that they make. You know, th this is a Netflix original, so um, they're gonna have great camera work. Their actors are gonna be, you know, th nothing they're gonna do is going to be low budget except possible storyline i don't think this was a lazy story at all I, like i said i just think maybe a little confusing at some points but cinematography overall i think it's good i really also i really like the fact that this type of movie where you have a bunch of young people teenagers um although i don't think these 
well, they, I guess they could technically be teenagers. These are all college students, so technically they could be 18 or 19, but, um, you know, a bunch of young people, a bunch of teenagers in a certain location with evil, like, lurking from the outside, you think of, like, them being in the woods, you know what I mean? Like, like a Friday the 13th situation, like, Jason is in the woods, and all oh, this is, uh, you know, uh, like, oh, so the, the stereotypical, let's go to the lake, what's that let's go oh my god someone just got stabbed and someone just got her throat slit and some he cut her head off and we find her head in the ground and someone's eating it like well that's not stiff <laughs> but you know what i mean like it always seems to be in a cabin on a lake this is in a desert i think that was fresh um of course there's horror movies that have taken place in desert but i mean to have that kind of um category i guess you could say and to put it in a different setting just like when you see foreign horror films you know 95 percent of the horror films you see are in america so to see a horror film in a, in a in a certain uh climate or not climate that was stupid to say environment that is that you know america does not have it would be different so i, I really like um the desert and it plays to the uh, idea that these they're they're supposed to be alone. They're supposed to be there's evil that is like I I keep saying there's evil that is outside trying to get at them on the inside of you know this house or whatever. But it also creates a feeling of there being evil amongst the group. You know, Evan was the one, uh, excuse me, Evan was the one that read the story and spoke this into existence. However, um, and this is good writing in my opinion, when you have characters that, you have dilemmas that turn into character versus character and it turns characters against each other, you know, they start questioning each other like, it's your fault and there's someone watching us last night, was it your brother? You know, that's he's a creep um, because... Uh, Evan's brother Peter didn't end up hanging out with the group. He ended up going back to his house and doing his own thing. So the setting made the movie a lot better, to be honest. If they if they made this, well, not a lot better. It made it better. If they if they try to put this in you know a regular neighborhood or something, um, I don't think it would have been as effective. This the desert location really helps with the loneliness and the us against a greater force kind of idea. So. I was a fan of that. The overall execution, like I said before, I think the story is interesting. Um, although it's not the first time we've ever seen it. There's a movie called The Bye Bye Man. I don't know if anyone's ever seen it. I don't like to do this to movies, but if you haven't seen it, don't waste your time. Um, it's like, let's be real. It's evident that this movie was, you know, it's kind of a lazy storyline and a um, a production company got behind it and they just threw a lot of money at it and put it in theaters because they figured they'd be able to make up their money and then some just to make a profit off of it, you know, that kind of thing. The, even like the, the CGI in the movie was bad. It's like, did you guys really try? So, as far as the production standpoint, I'm not saying the actors didn't try, but um, I totally lost my train of thought. But yeah, as far as the score goes, like I said, out of five, I would give it a four. Um, maybe a little lower uh, on the four scale, like a 4.1 if, if you want to be specific. Just because I, I don't know what it is about this movie. I feel like the, I don't want to say there's not like repetitive scenes, but I think I was kind of waiting for something like out of left field and then at the end scene there was something about it that I wasn't a huge fan of. I will get into that soon. Um, I wanted to just give the quick spoiler free portion of this. So like I said overall I'll give it a 4 out of 5. I did enjoy this movie a lot. I recommend it. It's on Netflix like I said. Um, this is one that has you know a lot of people talking. Apparently it's controversial. I don't know why it's so controversial, but it is. So if you guys want to check it out, like I said. Um, and now I'll get into the 
spoiler part of the video so if you want to watch it and you don't want anything spoiled for you you can click off of it now so there's you know i don't think there's a lot to spoil in this movie but the end scene and one of the things that i could that i would critique or that i wasn't a huge fan of is the basically the his g curse or whatever is you're not supposed to say his g five times um it creates like a great evil or whatever evan reads the story not knowing this is evil obviously he speaks it into existence five times so now he's cursed you know like i said bad things start happening to his friends it's turning them against each other they're trying to figure out what's going on they're th they think they're seeing people and they turn around and the person was in the other room turn back around this person's not there it's like you know hallucination kind of thing um Basically, at the end, Evan and uh, half of the group, because there's like 10 people roughly, they leave and they go out on a hike, you know, they go to just hang out or whatever. And Zoe, who was, like I said, the girl he falls in love with, she is back at the house because she twisted her ankle and she's with the rest of the group. Um, Evan just basically connects everything in his mind and realizes that there's a symbolism about the number five. Um, they were playing cards and they all passed out drunk. He wakes up the next morning. All of the number fives from the different suits are laid face up. There's cups that are in groups of five. There is just, just like a bunch of different fives. And then he realizes that he was thinking back to the story and he did a little research on the story. You know, the classic research scene that's in every movie where, um, you know, people like, they figure out what the evil is and then they go research it. You know, um, shout out to Chris Stuckman. I'm, he's not going to see this video, but uh, he's a big movie reviewer. He talks about the research scene a lot, which is funny. Um, he does a little research on his laptop, figures out why and what's going on with this story. He stops everyone and he says, wait, how many people are back at the house? And they like name all the people. He realizes that there's five people that are back at the house. He feels something wrong is going to happen. He makes all of his friends go back to the house immediately. Once they get back to the house, all the furniture is turned upside down. It's like on the ceiling. It's clinging to the wall. Um, messes are made everywhere. There's a bunch of like suicide setups, if that makes sense. Like there's um, water in like this tub and there's a toaster that's plugged into it that's put in there. There's a fork that's stuck into an outlet and it's sparking there's knives everywhere there's a noose hanging from like the ceiling um and they like they end up realizing that this demon or whatever that is following them is actually some kind of shape-shifting mutant demon like whatever and it was taking form of their friends in order to get close to them confuse them and just basically do evil things and his g ends up um they end up realizing that this whole history thing is there's they want five sacrifices or five deaths or um you know something of that matter of that manner so the girl zoe ends up being the one that's possessed by this his g demon um if you will and she holds up her hand like symbolizing five and when she puts like a number down like four three each person like a different person that ends up being possessed kills himself she only she does it once and you know the like one of the girls like slits both of her wrists to just like bleed out she holds up four everybody like runs away or whatever they're hiding in the house she ends up going from four to one and not doing three two one just going straight to one and um they all end up killing themselves and evan is like trying to stop them evan runs away you know from all of this craziness he ends up hiding in a shed and he has a lighter i'm um, sorry i just totally messed up he ends up hiding in a shed zoe walks in you know she's still possessed whatever she hands him a lighter and basically i guess to show that she wants him to burn this house um burn this shed down and kill himself whatever um and then it just kind of flashes to the next morning 
his brother Peter is worried about him, so he goes on uh, worried about Evan, so he goes to the house to to find him to see what happened, and he realizes that Evan's still alive. Where is everyone else? Who knows? Um, the only thing I don't understand, the only thing I don't like is what happened to Zoe. Did she kill herself? If she's possessed, though, why would she? Like, what does it isn't supposed to be everyone else dies? Did he find a way to kill her? I just feel like that they kind of just left a lot out, and they even just one little hint at what ended up happening could have helped a lot. So, yeah, but like I said, overall, I like this movie. I give it a four out of five. Um, this is a long video, I didn't realize it would end up going this long. Um, so I'm going to try to get a list together, um, try to come come out with a different little video um, next time, but hopefully I'll be uploading in a couple days, um, but like I said, at least once a week, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you next time.